So these two choices aren't uh, seen as aesthetically favorable for the, for the patient. Well, enter Bruxer. Let's take a look at how Bruxer fits into all of this. And again, this is a 100% zirconia-based crown. So there's no porcelain on this crown. It's entirely uh, zirconia. Well, what is Bruxer? That's a good place to start. Bruxer is a 100% zirconia crown. So unlike most zirconia-based crowns where the zirconia makes up the substructure, the coping, and then we put porcelain on the outside of it, Bruxer is 100% zirconia from all the way to where it touches the prep all the way out to the occlusal surface. Now, why would we do this? Why would we go with this monolithic concept of a total zirconia crown? Well, one of the big reasons is when you take porcelain and you put it on something, whether it be a metal substructure or a zirconia substructure, when you put those two layers together, there's always the possibility that those two layers are going to come apart. Uh, the best case scenario for that is just some chipping on the porcelain that you might be able to polish unless it's an anterior tooth, uh, or the porcelain can break off all the way exposing the zirconia substructure or the metal substructure. So one of the big benefits of having a monolithic restoration is the fact that nothing can chip off of it because it's all made out of one homogeneous material and we don't have two materials that are fused together. Another reason why a Bruxer monolithic zirconia crown is such a good idea is because we see a lot of cases here in the laboratory where dentists have had to underprepare or underprepared for any number of reasons. And in those cases, we have very few choices. In fact, the choices typically come down to, you can do a cast gold crown there, you can do a PFM crown with a metal occlusal there, or you can uh, adjust the opposing until this PFM fits between it. Now, all three of those options aren't necessarily attractive to the patient. Patients don't really enjoy having their opposing teeth ground down to make room for the new crown. And more and more patients are objecting to cast gold crowns, which I don't happen to agree with, but this is the patient's choice, not mine. And patients aren't real big on a PFM crown that's got a big metal occlusal as well. So with a Bruxer homogeneous 100% zirconia based restoration, now we have the ability to have something that we can use in those areas of limited interclusal reduction that is still tooth colored. Let's take a closer look at those three options I just talked about and talk about what the patient might like better. One option for a crown prep where we have limited inner occlusal space is to use a metal occlusal PFM as you see here. And it's an okay solution. You know, there's really nothing wrong with it from a functional standpoint, but patients aren't real thrilled when they see it. In fact, I remember early in my career having a woman question, you know, the $750 she'd spent on a porcelain crown and why was it half metal, you know, on half the top and half the inside. And she could see it with a mirror on the lingual. So that's a solution, but it's not necessarily one where the patient's gonna go, oh, great idea, doc, I'm glad it looks like that. Another solution is certainly to go with a cast gold crown. And there's really nothing bad that you can say about a cast gold crown. Gold is the longest lasting restoration that I've ever seen in the mouth. It won't break, it wears, it doesn't wear the opposing teeth. Everything that you can say about it is really nice, except for the fact that depending on where it is in the mouth, it can be seen from about uh, 30 feet away. And there are just patients uh, who simply refuse to have cast gold uh, in their mouth. There are patients who still like cast gold and most of them are dentists or work for dentists but uh, a lot of patients that uh, that i talk to simply don't want to have cast gold in their mouth therefore we've got a situation where uh, because we had a short clinical crown maybe on a lower second molar or something like that we have a very short prep we couldn't reduce anymore we've got some limited inner occlusal space and we need to place a crown back there so these two choices aren't uh, seen as aesthetically favorable for the for the patient well enter Bruxer, let's take a look at how Bruxer fits into all of this. And again, this is a 100% zirconia based crown. So there's no porcelain on this crown. It's entirely uh, zirconia. This crown is virtually unbreakable. And that's how we talk about Bruxer because it doesn't have any porcelain uh, that can chip off of there. Uh, and by the same token, it's a very robust material as you'll see when you try to take off your first zirconia based restoration, it's very difficult to cut through. And you'll see that this is a, a strong, strong crown. Now, if you look at this, it doesn't necessarily look exactly like a tooth. And I'll show you some pictures in just a second of some Bruxer crowns in the mouth, but that's not the point. This crown was not designed to be an aesthetic crown. It was designed to be more aesthetic than cast gold and more aesthetic than a metal occlusal. And uh, if you had a study model with these three crowns on it and told your patient they could have their choice of the three of these, what do you think are the chances that they're going to take 
this crown, even if it doesn't match maybe the first molar in front of it perfectly. This one might match a little bit better in terms of the porcelain, but half of it's metal and the cast gold won't uh, match at all. And so that's one of the, the big deals. Really Bruxer, uh, its primary indication in my mind is when you want to place cast gold in a patient's mouth and, and the patient simply won't accept it. Bruxer is a, a fantastic restoration in cases like that.